where we deserve and we need not we deserve if there is a place in Ghana where we deserve air condition everywhere it is here but look at us in this whole building there's no air condition you attempt putting an air condition here and so church members will, will, will rebel and backslide ah to to air condition we are hungry and they are doing air conditioning. Sometimes it's as if you are saying the whole world should stop because you are hungry. And, and listen to me. I don't want to sound insensitive to poverty. But I have seen many poor people in this world. And when you trace it, uh, you see that the poverty is their own fault. People have helped them again and again and again and again and they are still where they are. No, go, go almost everywhere. You know, so sometimes when I see these um, government interventions and they are talking about Sada and Nada, I, I have dealt with a lot of the regional ministers. And when they put the plan in front of me, I tell them, you know what, it will not work like I told I told them to work. But look, this thing you are calling poverty alleviation program will do nothing because you see, you are doing things on the ground, but you are not doing things in the mind of the people. Until the mind of the people is renewed and their minds change, you can never change poverty. You can never cure poverty. Poverty is more of a mentality than a reality on the ground. There is a way you think. That will take you into poverty and take you into poverty and take you into poverty and take you into poverty. And there is a way you think also that will take you into prosperity and take you into prosperity and take you into prosperity. The Bible said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now, the unbelievers don't believe we should prosper. I remember several years ago, Anytime you wanted to describe this building, Fountain Gate Chapel, we used to say Fountain Gate Chapel opposite the Vag Hall. In fact, we use this Vag Hall, that tiny building there, we used it to describe where this building was. Fountain Gate Chapel opposite Vag Hall. Then later on, it became Fountain Gate Chapel opposite the police headquarters. And when we built this thing and started doing it the way it was and started moving the landscape outside this building and pushing it towards the gutter to let it assume its own prominence people started shouting where are they going with all this big building where where are they going with it why why is bogatanga yes why are they decorating the the, the 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 front of the building up to the gutter where are they going with all these things in fact, when we're doing the landscaping in front of the church, you may think we are doing it on people's head. You, you, you would think they woke up in the morning and we were planting grass on their head because their reaction was swift and violent. Meanwhile, containers are everywhere. They are not reacting. The organizers are everywhere. They are not reacting. But as soon as you make an attempt put it, to put a distance between you and the rest of the people, you will see a reaction you don't like. Of course, they got tired and they stopped. But today, who describes this building as Fountain Gate Chapel opposite the hall? No, Fountain Gate is Fountain Gate. When you mention the name, you have mentioned it. When you mention the name, you have mentioned it. <laughs> you will never use opposite VAG or opposite police headquarters again. It's gone. It's history. Because you know what? We've created by the grace of God our old name. I pray in the name of Jesus. May they never use anybody to describe you. May they not use anybody to describe you. May they not call your name and say the son of Mr. Golu or the son of Mr. Kuma. No, no, no. When they say Ernesto, everybody should know that the Ernesto is one. He doesn't even need his father to be introduced. By the time they need your father's name to introduce you, it means you are not making an impact in life. You must come to the place. When they say Kwame is Kwame, when they say Yao is Yao, when they say Asibi is Asibi, when they say Fuseni is Fuseni, if you can clap your hands, the power of God is upon you in the name of Jesus. 
you know all this? All these spirits just hate to see you prosper. And listen to me. If they hate the believer prosper, I can promise you, as for the church, they will hate the prosperity of the church. And, and I like the way 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I like the way people talk today as if in the days of Paul, some things didn't happen. You know, you hear some people and they say, these days the pastors, the pastors these days, the pastors these days, as if in the days of Paul, if they were there, they will accept the days of Paul. You know what? People don't want the believers to prosper. They don't want the politician to prosper. They don't want a leader to prosper. They don't want an academician to prosper. They don't want a sportsman to prosper. They don't want an entertainer to prosper. Anybody who is doing his work well, and his work could have paid him well, we still think they shouldn't prosper. And when it comes to a pastor, it is worse. I like a situation, a young man told me one day, he told me, he said, he said, pastor, the day I hear that a pastor has a private jet, that day, me and that pastor will not talk again. I said, oh, so what about if it's a gift? You know what he told me? He said, you should sell it and do something else. Uh -uh. There was a day I was traveling from London to Ghana. And then we we're sitting in the plane and a friend of mine told me something. He was standing outside and arguing with a certain medical officer, a young medical officer. He and this, my friend, were arguing. And then my friend came and sat by me and I said, what was all that argument about? He said, oh, there is a young man there. He's a medical officer. And he pointed at the young man. And the young man was sitting in the business class. So he said, this young man. I said, what happened? He said, the young man was very angry and fuming. I said, why is he angry? He said, he doesn't understand why pastors should sit in a business class in the play. I said, ah, but he is sitting in the business class. He said, yeah. He said he is qualified to sit in the business class because he's a doctor. But, but why are these pastors also sitting in business class and some are even in first class? And I said, you mean this young boy I'm seeing? He said, yes. Now, so you are a young boy and you are a doctor and you deserve to sit in the business class of a plane. A pastor who may be in his 60s maybe 70s an old person in their 50s who have labored and they have worked all their life you are saying they don't deserve to sit in the business class of a play and these are older men who need to sit down and relax a little bit they are more at a risk of thrombosis than you are they are more they are at the risk of blood clots more than you sometimes they are busier than you though you think you are a doctor some of them sit in the plane and they have to work and work and work and get down and from the airport they have to go straight to a meeting and you are saying that you see